everybody, even if it wasn't true. You were the girl in the class who slept with everybody. And therefore, that will come back to haunt you throughout your life. It, it diminishes your career. It stops you from progress. It stops everything. It's a kind of perpetual, lifelong bullying. And that is what concerns me very much about social media and its anonymity. That's a good jumping off point to, um, I mean, social media, obviously, um, accountability and anonymity is a problem. Uh, but I would argue that that also exists in the corporate media. I mean, how many of us know who owns this company or that company? You turn on the TV at night, and unless you're a policy wonk, which I'm guessing you all are, but maybe the tens of thousands watching that are not <coughs> going to know that. Um, you know, we're, we're not necessarily any more aware of, of who is in, who's behind the mainstream media. I think some of you alluded to it in the stories you told about, about that. So question for you, last one before we open it up to the audience. Um, of the key federal policy decisions before Parliament or the CRTC right now, related to media or social media access for Canadians, which one or two are you most concerned about and why? And are there any policies that are inspiring for you, either in Canada or, just to make your answering a little bit easier, also abroad? Because there's, there's lots happening around the world right now. And Elizabeth, maybe we'll start with you. Well, I, I'm going to try very briefly with Andrea's permission to focus very much on the changes in the Canadian media landscape over my lifetime, certainly as an aware Canadian. Uh, you, go, you go back to Senator Keith Davies' report in 1969 about the fact that our Canadian media was being bought up by fewer and fewer people. Tom Kent's report in the 1980s described the extent of corporate concentration of media ownership in this country as monstrous. It's, you know, this panel is on democracy and media. This is the biggest Threat, I mean, other than the obvious ones that we see in terms of partisan politics, but to an aware, effective, engaged citizenry, a co-opted media is a disaster. And Kent, Tom Kent talked about it in 1980s as monstrous, and that was before Conrad Black started buying up everything. So if you want to look at a country with a significant problem and a lack of diverse media voices, I mean, we have rabble, we've got the tie but I'm talking mainstream media, so all the major dailies in British Columbia are owned by Post Media. The C uh, CTV and Globe and Mail are Post Bell Media, they mean rather Bell Media Enterprises. Then you've got Post Media, it used to be all one thing, right? It used to be both the newspapers and a lot of the global TV and radio stations. When they went bankrupt, it got bought up separately. So 43 daily newspapers in this country got bought up by something now called Post Media. Not every story is bad, I'm not saying that. But the owner is the former CEO of the National Post, Paul Godfrey. And all the TV and radio pieces went to Shaw, which also has an interest, of course, in other corporate in involvement. So you've got a situation here where we desperately need policy tools to deal with this. And there isn't a single thing on the legislative agenda in this country that begins to touch it. We need antitrust laws. If you look at the Competition Act, all it will tell you about a newspaper is whether one newspaper chain is charging too much or too little for the paper. Competition deals with price controls, not with content. The CRTC can deal with Canadian content, but not with the fact that a handful of people. And then, of course, we have CBC and Radio Canada, which you hope are going to be as state broadcasters, public broadcasters, offsetting this. But they've been so threatened by the rise of Harper conservatism that the, that the CBC National News thinks that an information, you know, a panel, the weekly panel, where we're going to hear from a diverse range of right-wing voices. I'm always so grateful to hear from a diverse range of range of white right-wing voices. And the CBC has become craven in its concern to, not to upset the Harper government. But guess what? It hasn't worked. CBC television is in big risk of being privatized within the next 12 months. I'm almost sure of it from the kind of rhetoric I hear in the House. So what we need, policy solution, is antitrust legislation that deals with the concentration of ownership in Canadian media en anglais et en français. changed the uh, FCC rules 
to uh, say that you no longer had to have fairness and balance and coverage. That made room for Fox News. La within the last 12 months, the CRTC was considering getting rid of the requirement, which we pushed back through a public outcry, but getting rid of the requirement that things broadcast in Canadian media had to be the truth. And they nearly changed it to you couldn't knowingly publish things that weren't true, knowingly broadcast things that weren't true. Uh, so there is a push on that as well, and I think the fact that Conrad Finkelstein, as chair of the CRTC, has said he's not going to stand again is yet another senior person in public life who's tried to hold the line for an independence in the way they make decisions, who's a casualty of the Harper government's ideology. Excellent. It's almost like I fed you the answer, because I wanted to make sure if you're Googling antitrust laws, you know there are many other versions than the United States version yes. of it. Um, Hetty, do you want to well, talk to us about this? Well, I'm going to just follow up on Elizabeth. I know you asked us a particular question. Can you hold the microphone? I know you asked us a particular question, but since Elizabeth opened that door, um, I would like to say I was in uh, Belgrade uh, sometime in summer, and I turned on BBC, and there we were, we got murdered off um, with uh, the tapping phones and cell phones. And, and, and this is not just about about what happened as a result of the media falling over, all the celebrities and the MPs, etc. But, but if you consider that the media has three most important things that we need to look for in the media. One, to give us information, but two, a free and unfettered media is a hallmark of democracy. It's one of the pillars of democracy. So that when you have media that is abusing its unfettered ability to speak out, you know, there's this ability that, you know, everyone is quick to jump, the media are quick to scream if anyone tries to contain them in any way, shape, or form. But I don't know if you know the story, because it was horrendous. There was a young girl who had been um, abducted, nobody knew where she was. They tapped into her cell phone, and they found her cell phone, and they pulled all the pieces out of her cell phone, and they was placing it daily out there. It made the parents and everyone think that this girl was still alive because there were text messages coming in and out of that cell phone. The girl had been killed from the, probably within 24 to 48 hours of being abducted. But here were the parents and everyone thinking that this girl was alive because they were able to tap into her cell phone. And they do it to everyone. We have, talk about democracy, politicians in the United States, in the United Kingdom, came out and said that they were terrified because they were being subtly blackmailed by the media so that they would do what the media wanted them to do. They were afraid to put a foot forward. If that is not, I mean, one is a privacy issue and one is the, the decadent and horrible lie that they, put, they pushed forward on this poor girl and her family and the people. But the second one was they have actually curtailed democracy in the United Kingdom by making the politicians so afraid. Now, I know we can all say that Hugh Grant and those guys deserve it, blah, 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 because they were giving celebrities a lot of trouble. But the bottom line is you can't separate any one of those three things that they did that was wrong. And that is media consolidation around the world. Rupert Murdoch, oh, so in the US, in Australia, in New Zealand, in the United Kingdom. And consolidation of the media is a problem. And I belong to the OSCE, I'm the gender representative of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And there, you can also see another trend in media where journalists are shut up. So we've got the exact opposite going on in some countries in Europe that are moving forward, trying to become members of the European Union. They are actually you know, taking journalists and putting them in jail <coughs> in certain parts of, of Central Asia and certain Eastern Bloc countries. And so keeping a watch on media is key because everyone knows, and I'm repeating it again, that a free and unfettered, truthful, and ethical media is one of the key pillars of democracy. So we need to ensure that the media is unfettered and isn't always being, you know, having people slap things on the media. But at the same time, where is the watchdog watching the watchdog? You know, if, if tomorrow Elizabeth trips as she's coming down the stairs because somebody put a some sticky stuff and she didn't see it, it's going to be because she has a problem with her hip and she can't walk, therefore she shouldn't be a politician because she's therefore disabled, blah, blah, blah. Now, that would be the quickest thing to say about Elizabeth uh, by the media. But, but at the end of the day, what we see is that 
is that there is no ability here for them to, so they watch, they go, oh, we want politicians to be ethical and truthful and there must be all sorts of transparency lines and da 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 da. And yet nobody's watching the watcher. I mean, I blogged on this, no one is watching the media to look at ethical structures within the media or surrounding the media that would ensure this. And, and, and whether that's antitrust laws or whatever, but there's got to be somebody that has to watch the watcher at some point in time because the watcher has gone haywire today. Okay, Ruby, do you wanna, wanna stand up? Well, um, just to uh, remind us of the question, What, what stuff is going on in Ottawa right now that we should be concerned about what policies. Um, so I think what Elizabeth and Hedy have said is a good segue to that. Um, just first of all on social media though, I do have a slightly different view than what was um, my two panel members have said earlier. I, I, I do think overall um, social media, Twitter is actually more open. Yeah, there are the trolls out there and they go after anybody and it's more based on ideology I think and, and, and sort of a partisan viewpoint, I wouldn't say it's so based on gender, at least that's my experience. But I do feel that in social media, whether it's, um, you know, the internet, Twitter, you know, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, there, there's much more space for people to engage, and I, I think it's an incredibly powerful tool. You just have to look at what's going on with one federal bill right now, C-10, which is this big omnibus crime bill. I mean, one of the fantastic things that's happening you know, because we're facing a really tough situation. We've got a conservative government that's trying to ram this through, all of this legislation in 100 days. And, and it's through the social media that the fight back and the resistance to that is really developing. So I think it's really important to note that we have some tools and some space on our side to actually deal with that. But what that leads me to is some of the federal th issues that are before us. I mean, I certainly agree that media concentration has been an ongoing issue in Canada for decades, but now we're facing even more complexity as we're dealing with, um, you know, sort of new advances in the media to do with net neutrality, the usage-based bill, uh, billing, uh, you know, the spying on the internet. I mean, these are whole new levels of public policy debate that are taking place, Never, notwithstanding just the issue of traditional media concentration. Um, and so this is, this is something we've got to be very, very concerned about because we know that the CRTC ruled just in January uh, that usage-based billing actually is allowed in Canada. There's been a huge campaign against it. Um, net neutrality has been a massive campaign. And I think it's really important to state um, that it, it's actually been um, through social media, you know, groups like Open Media and others who have actually been helping us overall in our communities develop the fight back against it. So, you know, there is power there if we know how to use it, but at the same time, we're having to resist these policies that are now being developed by the Conservatives. I mean, the latest one, the bills that we have now on um, a sort of surveillance on the internet, I mean, even Jennifer Stoddard, who's the Federal Commissioner of Privacy, has come out with an open letter saying how much she's concerned about the impact on privacy rights in Canada. So, I, I mean, I do think we've got two or three things in Ottawa right now that are enormous in terms of um, our ability to access the media overall and to have, in effect, a level playing field. And so I, I, I close that uh, question, Andrea, by saying, because I know you're going to say, what are we going to do about it? Um, and I think one thing that we can do is actually to show our support for independent and alternative media. You know, groups like Ravel.ca, uh, the Taid, uh, the Georgia Strait, you know, where there, where there are great efforts being made to actually keep us informed. Um, and then through the campaigns like we've seen with Open Media uh, and other organizations who are trying to like gather up the, um, uh, all of the diversity that, that's across the country in fighting against these, uh, these, this legislation that's in Ottawa right now. So I, I actually see today, Media Democracy Day, as a day where we kind of analyze that and we can actually figure out that there is stuff that we can do to fight back because I do think the conservatives are actually uh, somewhat sensitive to it. You know, the big question I get is, well, how can you ever fight these guys? They've got a majority. They can do whatever they want. Well, that's true. But, but we have to also understand that politics is very dynamic. And even the conservative majority government is susceptible to public pressure. And we've seen that on some of these internet issues. 
when the pushback happens. So I think we need to actually affirm our own strength in this regard and, and not just say, well, you know, we'll kind of give up because it's game over. It isn't. These issues are too important, too big, and right now they're before Parliament, and I, I know that we're all committed to working on them, and I, I hope that's what comes out of Media Democracy Day. Thanks. Riley, yo, where would they go to find more information? Gov.ca. 